Hello, welcome to CSC 7132, Operating Systems and Networking. This is Brady Chen. This is part B of section 6.1, Requirements for Efficient Memory Management. In our previous video, we just talked about program relocation. Now there are two types of program relocation. One is static relocation and the other one is dynamic relocation. Now static relocation binds binds all logical addresses to physical addresses prior to execution. Okay. And uh, basically it means that uh, the, the 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 binding of the addresses actually happens you know during the load time. Okay. Now, dynamic re relocation postpones the binding of a logic address to the physical address until the addressed item is accessed during execution. So that means the address binding happens during the runtime. Okay, now here in this slide, we're going to talk about how do we implement this dynamic reallocate, relocation. So before we talk about the implementation of dynamic relocation, let's introduce the concept of a relocation register. Okay. A relocation register contains the physical starting address of a program or program component in a memory. Now, when a program is created, it may consist of various different components. That's something we're going to talk about a little bit later. But the first, the program will be placed in the logical memory space, starting with the logic address, memory address 0, 1, and all the way to n minus 1. Suppose n is the size of the program. Now, before we execute the program, we first need to find a space in the physical memory, the space that's big enough to accommodate that program, right? Now, the relocation register basically stores the starting address of this memory space that they used to accommodate the program or the program component. Now, many programs consist of three main components, the code and also the static data, which basically stores the data that will be used as an import for the code. And the dynamic data, mostly used to store the temporary variables during the execution of the program. Okay. Now there are two memory management schemes for dynamic relocation. Okay. Um, one, it treats all three components, the code, the st static data, and dynamic data as one unit. Okay. Now, if we treat all three components as one unit, then we have to find the contigu contiguous area of the memory. Okay, but just one chunk of memory space that's big enough to accommodate all three components, the code, the static data, and the dynamic data. Okay, so that's just, um, you know, the way that the, we treat all three components as a one unit. Now, a more flexible management scheme treats the three components as separate modules. Now, that's something we can talk about later. Now, let's suppose that, the, um, you know, we treat three components as a one. So then, dynamic relocation can be implemented using single relocation register. 
because all three components are in one chunk of location so we just need one starting address okay so then we just need one relocation register to store the starting address okay now a more flexible management scheme treats the three components as separate modules okay each of which may reside in different area of memory now three relocation register registers will be used now each loaded with the starting address of one of the modules okay so now here's the program right okay so once the program here's the program the logical memory space starting from the logical address 0 to a minus 1 now once this logical address the program actually in the logical memory space is loaded into the physical memory now the the code will be loaded in one part of the memory and then some of the statical data will be loaded into a different memory and then the dynamical data will be loaded into another memory location okay so then depend on the which the address which address belong depend on the uh, lo, the you know the type of address you know different address going to be loaded into different component okay if this memory address actually stores the statical data then it will be loaded into the statical data area if this memory address actually you know stores the dynamical like a, a temporary variable and these temporary variable will be stored in the dynamic area the code will be here in a code area so so that means we need a three we need a three um, different relocation register we need a three different relocation register okay here here and here okay now that's the other approach um, now this diagram actually illustrate how these dynamic relocation actually works now the top one the top part is the static relocation so once the all the actually logical address are mapped to the physical address now the address space the, the address here basically represent the physical memory address so that's the static relocation so every address represent a physical memory address okay now for the dynamic relocation so then some of the address binding gonna be gonna be happening during the runtime so these address like a 120 really it is still a logical address zero is still a logical address because when you call zero you're not going to be able to find the function because function is currently located in the physical memory address 1000 so when you call zero so zero is not a physical memory address that's a logical memory address now so the binding going to have actually happens during the runtime now here on the left that's the algorithm we use to do the dynamical uh, memory uh, relocation okay now suppose when 
the program is executing the pro the code okay it's execute this particular code to say st store 120 now we know that 120 is logical address right okay so the 120 gonna basically first compare with the limited register so the limited register because basically stores the largest possible memory address the physical memory memory address for for this particular um, program okay so if it's still within the limit okay so then we're gonna say yes this is a legitimate logic address so now what is the limited register the limited register basically tells you the the largest logic address let's say uh, 2000 okay now once it's loaded into the physical memory address then 2000 are going to add the starting memory address so, so that's this will be 3000 in the physical memory address because it starts from zero the logic address 2000 start from 1000 the logic address uh, physical address 3000 so here started from 1000 so the the last one is 3000 okay so this limit register basically stores the the largest possible um, logical address for the whole program so now in this case 120 compared with 2000 so it's less right so it's less than so that means this is a legitimate 120 is legitimate logical address now if it's bigger than 2000 so that means it's outside the range okay if the logic address is like a 4000 now that 4000 does not belong to this logical memory address space so it's way beyond this 2000 limit okay now if it's if, if it says yes then it will it will add this logic address 120 will add a relocation register so in this case the relocation register is 1000 right now we assume that the, all these program components are in the contiguous relocation so that we treat all three compo uh, program components as uh, as using one uh, relocation register so that's 1000 okay so then the relocation register plus the logical address that was imported so we we actually got 1120 now that's the address going to be stored in the memory so that's the address of this okay location okay so that's the algorithm we use it to to dynamically you know decide what's the the physical memory address for this particular logic address. so this this is the algorithm used to for the address binding during the runtime okay this happens in over these blocks now let's illustrate these dynamic relocations using the diagrams here okay now on the left side it's a diagram that the you know this scheme basically treats three components as one unit so here's the program okay and 500 is the starting physical memory address for the program okay this is actually starting memory address that the program gonna load it to so that means the relocation register gonna store this 500 okay now during the execution during the execution the load instruction ld that's load okay load instruction ld uses flag that's the flag which basically means that's rr basically means okay re, you know relocation register so that means this 80 is not the physical memory address okay 
This is actually logic memory address, and we have to use the relocation register. Okay, so then, so the logic address is going to be used, and eventually going to add the values in the relocation register 500, and then it will create the actual physical memory address. 550. So when you actually do the load, it will load 580, not 80, because 80 is logical. So eventually, you're going to load the, the memory address 580 over here. So because 80 is actually out of the range, because the starting memory, physical memory address 500. So 80 is actually before 500. So it's, it's, it's not within the range. So it's not a legitimate physical memory address. But 580 is, right? So what's good about reloc you know, dynamic relocation? Because when you act when the program, the same logic the program is loaded into a different memory location, saying in this time we're gonna load the program into the different memory location. So the starting physical memory address is one hundred. So in this case, we just need to change the relocation register value from 500 to 100. And then when you actually execute this particular load instruction, when we see this um, flag RR, we know, OK, that's a logical address, right? Well, so logical address need to be processed. It will be add the the values in the relocation register, which is 100. So then we get the physical memory address 180, and which is over here. Okay. So, so this is actually the advantage of dynamic relocation. Okay. So you can actually load the program in various different locations. Now, for the static program relocation, once it's actually loaded into the physical memory location. You cannot change it because every every actually memory address refer to the physical memory address. So if you change something, then everything else needs to be changed. It's a mess. Now the another approach basically treats three components separately. Okay. So that's the other approach for the dynamic relocation. Now in this case, we have three register in a relocation register. One relocation register is deal with the code. Okay. So that's CR, the code relocation uh, register. Okay. Now we load this piece of program, the code into the starting memory address 500. However, for the data, the static data, which is loaded into the physical memory location of 200. And for the dynamic data, we, we load it into the ER, uh, FR, which is actually the starting memory address is 800. Okay. Now, even though I just write, you know, put this, you know, different component in different, in that such an order, but in reality, in the physical memory, in the physical memory, the static data is actually in 200, right? From 200 to somewhere. That's static data, right? And then, then 500. That's the code. Okay. Now, dynamic data actually starts from 800. Okay, so that's a stack and a heap. Okay. So then when we execute the code, say, okay, BR basic means branch. That's the uh, instruction for BR stand for branch. Okay. So then we basically use the flag CR basically means, okay, that's the, uh, you know, relocation register we use. It's a code re register, okay? So, so CR basically means that's the first register we're gonna use. It's a CR, the, the code register. 
So the value is 500. So that means this logical address 0 going to be actually eventually add the value in the CR, the code register, and then you got a physical memory address 500, and that's 500. So that means it's a, the branch basically means goes to the beginning of the code. Okay. Now when you execute the next one load, now the load is actually has a flag dr. dr basically means means it's a static data component, right? So then the starting memory address for static data is 200. So so then we need to do this. So the logical address 220 will eventually add the 200, which is located in the data register. And then we got 200 plus 20. So that's 220. So then we're going to actually load the data in the memory location 220. Okay. So we're not going to use the 500. We're going to use 200. Okay. Because they use a separate, a different uh, relocation registers. Now, for the last one, it's a, for whatever the instruction, it used FR, that's the dynamic data component. So this component is actually used the uh, relocation register 800. Okay. So, so that 45 logical address. So when we bind the physical address, the physical address should be, you know, eventually 45 plus 800. So that's the physical address for this temporary data, okay, which is located in the logical uh, address 45. So when you actually load the code, we load the three components, program components into different memory locations. So we actually need uh, to use three different you know, relocation registers to find the physical address of the data. So we just mentioned that uh, in order to execute the program, we need to do the address binding, right? So here's the program, which is in logical memory space. And here's the logical address, 0 to n minus 1. Now, in order to execute the program, we need to eventually load the program into the physical memory, right? So then we, in order to load into the physical memory, we need a memory binding, memory address binding, right? So we need to find a physical lo memory location, okay, that's big enough to accommodate the program. So then that location could be anywhere. For example, um, the logical actual memory space always starts from 0 to n minus 1, but the physical uh, depend on the availability of the physical memory location. It could be like a starting from 1000, and then to, to accommodate this program, it's it going to be 1000 plus n minus 1, right? So, so we need to find a physical memory location. Now, in order to do this, the operating system needs to keep track of all free spaces. Okay, so the operating system should have a place to keep track of all the free spaces. Now, once the program actually is created and eventually want to be loaded into the memory, then we need to actually check with the operating system and say, hey, I want to load a program of this size into the memory. Can you actually find a physical memory space so I can actually load this program into. Okay, so the operating system need to keep track of all free spaces. Okay, now we refer these three spaces as a holes. Okay, a hole. And then we use we use link the list and must find a hole of appropriate appropriate size 
whenever a new program component is to be loaded into the memory. Okay, we have to actually find a, a hole that's big enough to accommodate a, comp a program or a program component. Okay, now operating system also must also coincide any neighboring hole result, resulting from the removal of a program from the memory to prevent a memory from becoming fragmented collect, collection of increasingly smaller holes. So that means if here's the memory, okay, now here we have a, a free memory space, right? And here that's called a hole. And then we have a memory space that loaded with a, a program. So this piece of memory space is occupied. And then we have another hole. And then another space with a program, another hole. A program, hole, program, right? Now, what about if one of the program it completes the job okay so this program is done okay so it doesn't make sense to keep the program in the memory right so we need to actually free free up the memory space to accommodate this right so that's the reason why we want to make sure operating system also coincides any neighboring holes resulting from the removal program so if the program is removed, so then we need to remove this and also remove the bar. So then we can actually make a bigger hole, okay? Instead of actually keep it fragmented, okay? Okay, so now we assume that the, the operating system can manage the, manage the free space, okay? Now. Assume that the one programs want to be loaded into the computer memory. Okay, so the operating system need to search the holes that to find the hole that's big enough to accommodate this program, right? Okay, how does the operating system do this? Now there are different search strategies. Okay, now. You know, I listed three, four of them. Okay, one is called a first fit. Now, first fit always starts the search from the beginning of the list. Okay, suppose we use, remember we use linked list to, you know, list all the, the holes, uh, right? If we start the first fit, basically start the search from the beginning of the list and allocates the first hole large enough. To accommodate the request so there might be some other holes multiple holes that are big enough to accommodate the program but the first fit can only you know put the program into the first hole okay now next fit starts each search at the point of the last allocation now for the first hole Every time when we have a new program, we always start a search from the beginning of the, you know, the list. Now, next hole basically, you know, once the actually the, you know, previous search complete, we find the hole for the program, for the for the previous program. If next program make a request, the search start from. Not from the beginning of the the list, but from where it was, it was it stopped. In a previous search okay that's the next fit now there's another you know search strategy called the best fit best fit searches the entire list and choose the smallest hole large enough to accommodate the result request okay so let's say when a program request for uh, you know for a memory space and then we start the search based on the program size. And then we find the first hole, which, 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 which is big enough for the program, 
but we're not going to allocate the, the hole because we're going to continue the search. We're going to find all the holes that are big enough for the program, and then we're going to select the smallest holes, smallest hole that's big enough for the program. Okay, that's the best fit. Based on the common sense, the best fit definitely is very good in terms of the space management, right? Okay. Now the other one is called a worst fit. Worst fit takes the opposite approach from the best fit by always choosing the largest available hole for any request. Okay. Now for both best fit and worst fit, you have to search the entire list and uh, find out all the holes that are big enough for the program. The best fit put the program into the smallest hole uh, that that's big enough and the worst fit always put in into the largest holes okay so these are the four uh, search strategies okay now let's illustrate these um, four actual search strategies you strategy using this example okay so the following memory contains four holes okay a, B, C, and D. And each inside this number represent the size of the hole. For example, five basically means the hole X is five bytes and 55 means 55 bytes, okay? Or you can interpret as five megabytes and 55 megabytes, it doesn't matter. It's just actually uh, uh, the, the unit of the uh, memory size okay now so if a new program request for 10 bytes okay now use we use bytes okay it's here how does the operating system allocate the program for each of the strategies okay now let's see 10 bytes right so let's first look at the first fit so we actually start the search from the beginning and then we find the first hole. Well, the first hole has five bytes, which is not big enough. So we continue the search and we find 55. Now 55 is big enough, right? Okay, so now let's put the 10 bytes in here. Okay, so now leaving these a smaller hole which is 45 bytes right so we're done okay now next fit we're gonna skip the next fit for now because next fit basically depend on the uh, previous search we will come back okay now let's take a look at the best fit okay so the best fit gonna start also from the beginning and uh, this hole is not okay it does not fit the uh, 10 byte now this hole yes it will fit okay so we continue to search this hole will fit but we're still gonna search okay and then 11 11 is bigger than 10 so this hole also fits and then we continue to search and the last hole is 100 so it fits Okay, now we have three holes that are big enough to accommodate 10 bytes. Now, which one are we going to choose? The best, best fit, basically, we're going to choose the smallest one. So we're going to put this 10 bytes over here. And now we have a small little bit of hole, which, which is one byte. Okay, that's the leftover. But with that. Now, what's the fit? Okay, it's a similar to the best fit. We search all these holes. That's not. This can fit. This can fit. This can fit. But we will put this in the largest hole, right? So then we have only 90 byte left. Okay. Now, for the next fit, let's say, assume that uh, the 
in a previous search, basically, you know, for the pre previous program, we already fit a program in one of the okay hole. So, for example, that program takes twenty. So then we have a uh, thirty-five left. Okay. So now, for this one, the program request for time bytes, then we are not going to start from the beginning. Okay, we start from here because we actually start from here. Okay, so then we find out you ha still have 35 left, right? So the first hole, 35, actually fits. Okay, so then we're going to put the 10 bytes over here. Okay, so then we have a uh, What's left over here? That's 25. So, so even though previous one was actually placed, the previous program was placed here, but this program with 10 bytes were actually placed next to it because that that's the leftover, which is 35. You know, it's big enough to fit the program. Okay. Now, so it depends on where the program previous program was actually you know placed so we actually stop wherever the pre, pre previous program stopped and um, you know stop the hold up the, the previous program actually you know was located and then we start from this new location so it never can be back from the beginning now what about if if the you know search and at the last one, then you're going to start over again from the beginning. Okay, so next next fit sometimes it's also called sometimes called a circular uh, next fit. So it's actually going round. Thank you.